Hi everybody, John Bailey, gemstone artist and founder of the Fastening Academy. Welcome back to the studio and to another installment in the official Facetron series of faceting videos. These are sponsored by the Jarvie Tool Company, the manufacturer of the Facetron instrument you see behind me. And today we're going to talk about some care and maintenance of your Facetron instrument to extend its life and increase your enjoyment and ease of using the instrument. We're going to come over and take a closer look at the instrument itself and just go through a few finer points. Come on over and check it out. Before we get into the details of cleaning your Facetron, I want to give you five tips to extend the life of your machine and reduce your cleaning needs as you go. First, don't use spray diamond. As you can see here, anything that's sprayed gets on everything. Jeff Jarvie has told me that he's had machines in for repair that were so contaminated by the use of spray diamond that you could sharpen a knife on any part of the machine. Can you imagine how much wear that causes? Don't use spray diamond. Use a diamond compound that captures the diamond so it doesn't get on everything. Second, do use O-rings on your dots. Using them every time will save you loads of cleaning effort and loads of repair bills. Third, Consistently use a masked condom or other protection from contamination. Like the O-rings on your dots, this doesn't take much effort, but it pays huge dividends in the long run. Fourth, always use absorbent padding to protect the base against dropped objects and abrasive-laden water. Dropping something on your deck can cost you $1,000 in one second. Letting the deck and the foot of the mast become eroded by abrasive swarf is the same thing, just in slow motion. Dedicate some towels or other rags to protecting your deck and save yourself lots of grief. And fifth, constantly remove contaminated water from your hands. Don't operate head controls with what you think are wet hands. All of the water on your hands will be full of abrasive. Every time you touch your machine with those wet hands, you are charging the machine parts with that abrasive. It's just like charging a lap. So dry your hands obsessively and keep the water off your controls. If you'd like to maintain the precision and extend the lifespan of your Facetron faceting instrument, you want to make sure to clean it up very carefully after every cutting session or every couple of stones, whichever comes first. The easy thing to do is to just break the machine down a little bit, take things away. I always like to take my drip tank and set it over to the side. The splash pan you probably want to remove and clean it out really well. You don't want any bits of swarf like this. This is all extremely abrasive material. So make sure you clean your swarf pan out every time. And if you have any swarf on your hands, make sure you remove that. We want to use a little cleaner of some kind to help strip off anything that might have gotten stuck to the fastening equipment, especially if you use the waxing the deck technique. I use a little bit of Windex. This is just a hand spray bottle. I buy it in bulk and mop up the deck. Make sure you clean it off. Clean off your platen. Clean around the platen. Clean especially under where the splash pan was because that's where your minerals are going to concentrate and they'll attack the anodizing of your deck. Clean off the area very carefully where the foot of the mast is going to be sliding. That's an easy spot to cause some abrasions or other dents, dings, or things that are going to injure the precision of your equipment. We're going to want to go ahead and disassemble the top of the unit, so let's remove any dops for your 45 adapter and always take really good care of this stuff. Don't drop it or leave it hanging around and handle it very carefully over your deck so you don't drop it and cause damage. We're going to put this on a nice towel and put it to the side. We're going to disassemble the mast by lifting the mast sleeve off of the core. We're going to double check to make sure that the ball bearing stayed in the mast. We don't want that falling, rolling around on the floor on us. So now we have the head disassembled. We're going to carefully put the bottom of the mast on a towel and then we're going to release the mast locker so we can lift the mast free of the head. 
and then we're going to put the bottom of the mast on a towel. Always be sure that you're setting the bottom of the mast down on a clean surface. I use a paper towel so it's clean every single time. I don't have to worry about any lint or anything else. If you put this down on a dirty working surface and it picks up some pieces of abrasive, then you're going to be destroying the core of your mast. You don't want that. So bottom of the mast on a nice clean paper towel. We can set the head down on one of our working rags. Be very careful, not at the edge of the table, somewhere where you can take care of it. We're going to get a new paper towel, nice clean one. Set that to the side. We're going to use that for the core of the mast in a moment. For right now, we're going to go ahead and remove the bottom of the mast, the foot. Remove it from the deck. Put that to the side very carefully. We're not going to bump it. We don't want to get anything on the surface of it, and we don't want to tip it over and pick up any uh, abrasives or lint or anything on it. So a little more cleaner. Make sure the entire deck, entire base, is mopped off. You can use Windex, you can use orange cleaner for this type of thing. Just get it completely cleaned off. Great. And we are going to wax the deck a little bit before we put this thing back together, so I'm going to go through the steps without doing that to show the process, but I'll be disassembling and I'll wax my deck before I put it back together. We want to pay a special attention to cleaning the sleeve of the mast and the mast well, that's the hole that the mast travels through in the head. These areas, if they have any abrasive in them, any abrasive material at all, it's going to wear the head out and we want to protect against that. So we'll use a little cleaner on a new clean paper towel. Keep throwing paper towels away, they're cheap. Your Facetron parts are not. So we'll just clean off the mast very carefully put it to the side. We're going to flip this paper towel around so if there's any abrasive we've got it captured. Dampen it again, wrap it around a finger, put it inside the mast well, and very carefully clean from both sides. Great. The foot of the mast is another thing that needs to be cleaned very carefully. Now don't flip this thing over, you're going to drop your ball bearings, so don't flip it all the way upside down. Just lift it and look underneath, like this, and we're going to wipe the surface on the foot of the mast. Make sure it's very clean. This is another one of those places where you always use the finger to make sure there's no little dents, dings, crumbs, or eyelashes in there. We'll go ahead and set this to the side. Now for the rest of the head, we want to tip the quill up. We want to be very careful not to turn it too far because if we push too far, our index gear release lever can be pressed inside the yoke and it can get locked up in there. So you don't want to have that happen. So don't tip it all the way. Just tip it enough. I hold the top of the head with my hand like this tip it against my hand, that way there's no way it can over travel. And we're going to look, we're going to examine the index gear teeth right here. Might be a good idea to set it in freewheeling so you can turn it and just inspect very closely, make sure those index teeth are nice and clean. Any kind of corrosion, oxidation on that brass, any buildup of swarf at all inside there and we want to take a very small toothbrush. I find that a Panasonic electric toothbrush is a nice thing to have around the shop and we can just do a little toothbrushing on there and clean it out. That'll uh, influence our precision in our indexing. So once we're sure that that's clean, another one of the places that we might want to make sure we're keeping clean, especially if you're not using your O-rings to prevent swarf from entering your quill, if you've got a tight quill, if it's beginning to build a concretion, if you've neglected to use O-rings or if you've bought a used machine, you might want to clean this out. And the ideal thing to use for that 
is a 22 caliber handgun or rifle brush. You can buy these at your sporting goods store. Just pick one up. I have one here that's set up on a handgun um, rod. And all we do is we spray a little WD-40 in the hole and we just clean it out the same way we would our rifle with a little in and out motion. And that'll clean it out very nicely. If you have any problems with your dots being sticky, this is the remedy for that. Just turn the brush a little bit, a little in and out. It'll clean it right up. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that anything that you've broken loose in there gets cleaned out. And the way we do that is we always keep some Q-tips around in the studio. And we just use a little cleaner, run the Q-tip into the quill. And you'll notice this is my machine that I've been using a lot. And I haven't cleaned this quill in a little bit. And yet, very little on the Q-tip. So this is the result of using the O-rings. If you use them, you won't have the problem here that you have to worry about. As we prepare to reassemble our fastening instrument, we want to make sure again that there isn't anything on the deck. Always check by feel. And we'll check our mast. Again, don't turn it upside down. Don't drop your ball bearing. Just tip enough so you can see the bottom and feel the bottom with your fingertips. Make sure there's nothing stuck on there. We'll reassemble the core of the mast first, very carefully. Put it in about the center position and lock it in place. If for any reason we wind up with the lever in the wrong spot, it's easy to fix. Just bring it here and rotate the nut on the bottom half a turn. That'll easily fix that. Okay. Lock it up so that it's snug. Now we want to reset the mast into the mast well. And now we get to the point where we might want to begin lubricating some parts. Remember that every place that we put any kind of liquid lubricant, it's going to have an affinity for diamond and any other kind of dust and abrasives, and that's going to cause wear on the instrument. So we don't want to put liquid lubrication on our mast. We want something dry, if anything at all. The factory doesn't actually recommend or suggest that you need some. Personally, I like a little dry graphite lubrication. It's a little bit messy, but it makes things work smoothly. So I put a little graphite on the mast. And then I just sort of spread it around with a tissue. You can also put the graphite on the tissue. And just rub it on the mast. I find this makes it work just a little bit smoother. We want to control our head very carefully. Lower our mast sleeve to a clean spot on our paper towel. Get it about two thirds of the way and then lock it very carefully. Control the head with two hands, just like the assembly video. Lower it onto the mast. Double check that our locking lever is snug enough and always make sure you've got deck protection before you turn loose of the mast. The reason we've gone through this process of reassembly is because we're going to look at some lubrication points and certainly uh, every place where there's a part that's moving now could possibly be lubricated. What kind of lubrication do you use? You can use some trombone slide oil, you can use some sewing machine oil. I like to use this uh, Inox MX, it's another lightweight machine oil. I like that it has this little hypodermic type needle so I can be really accurate with where I put my lubrication. 
One of the places we're going to lubricate on the head is the index locking tooth or lever. This thing is also the piece that gets moved when we adjust the cheater. So when we push the cheater in this way, we're traveling against a spring. The easy way to do this is to turn the cheater all the way to the left and let it slide over. You can take your oil tool, put a tiny amount of lubricant right on that shaft, and then turn the cheater so that it pushes it in. Another way to do this is to rotate the quill or rotate the index gear. I find that a little ham-handed. I don't like it. So I just use the cheater, the thing that's supposed to move it, and I push it all the way over. We can put a little drop of oil on the other side. So when we loosen it, we have a nice smooth travel both directions. If you're not sure, give it an extra drop. Just remember, you don't want things to be too wet because you're going to be collecting swarf, you're going to be collecting diamond, and that's undesirable. You can also lubricate the cheater screw itself. and that will make a nice smooth action. When you're finished with that, make sure you drop it in your ID tooth, your 96 or whichever gear it is, and always set your cheater to its center point, especially if you have a mark for a zero cheater. You can lubricate the quill at this point. Just set your freewheeler. to drop in here. You can lubricate the locking mechanism or the inside of the quill. I don't recommend doing a whole bunch of that because again, every place there's oil, it's going to have an affinity for diamond. I use a really small amount and I clean up really well after the fact. Use some tissue. any place you can get at the oil to wipe it away, you want to wipe it away because any place oil is exposed, it's going to be grabbing all the diamond it can get a hold of. On occasion, you might lubricate your locker, especially if it's stiff or if it begins to feel uh, gunky, but it shouldn't do that as long as you're keeping it clean. You might lubricate Your protractor, again, not too much. You don't want things gunky. You don't want them sucking up diamond. And you don't want them oily. So if you lubricate any of this stuff, a tiny little bit, just enough to make it smooth. It's a good idea to store your protractor near 90 degrees. That way if someone bumps it, something gets against it and the head descends uncontrollably, your quill won't be gouging your DAC. It's also a good idea to always, always control the head with two hands, and when you leave the instrument, leave it with the head parked near the bottom. I hope you enjoyed the video on cleaning, care, maintenance, and lubrication. If you have any other questions about the Facetron instrument or fastening in general, just head right up there to the Contact Me button and click that and we'll do our best to answer any questions that you have.